Dr. Mikhail Voiku. Uh, he's the Chief Security Officer for TELIT. I want to tell you a little bit about Dr. Mikhail Voiku. I was instructed to say his name with an Israeli accent, right? He's responsible for the overall security of products and services that TELIT offers. Prior to his role, he was the Chief Information Security Officer of ILS Technologies since 2010, and he was the Senior R&D Software Engineers at Nortel. He has an applied engineering MSc and a doctorate from the University of Economics Studies. Thank you. Mikhail, the stage is yours. Okay, good. We pass the microphone uh, test. Uh, good morning, everybody, again. It seems like I'm the first one. I have to wake you up. Um, everybody uh, having coffee? It's actually very good. I came all the way from Florida, and unfortunately, I was hoping to have a different kind of weather, but I got the same thing. <laughs> so uh, it's nice to be around the same weather. It kind of uh, makes you ticking. Um, I'm very excited to be the first presenter. Actually, I asked for this slot, hopefully that I can get out of the cyber world fast. And he was bringing a lot of cyber. You're not going to see any cyber world in my presentation. I want to say from the beginning. I just want to stay away from that word. I think you guys are sick of it. And I want to get you to real stuff. Not that cyber is not real stuff, but the word is kind of overloaded. So. Um, a couple of things about Telet at the beginning. Let me put this one in. Uh, how many people have heard about Telet before the Telet people? Good, well, it's okay. So, um, as you can see the slide, uh, 15 years of experience, uh, some of them in the module, some of them in the uh, new services like IoT. We have a lot of customers. I'm not gonna read the slide. I have only 15, 20 minutes. Uh, interrupt me if you want to discuss so we can make it longer at this moment. But I don't think you want that. Um, and we are extremely popular in a lot of countries, over almost 50 countries right now. Um, what Talit does, basically? Three pillars, big pillars. First of all is the main core, um, IoT modules, cellular modules. Um, some of them um, designed for IoT. Uh, second pillar is basically what we call it IoT connectivity. Uh, it's basically the management of the uh, um, connection to the cellular network or the core network, SIM cards, different kind of uh, protection on that case. And the third pillar is basically the new part of the, the company that is actually the platforms. We have a full-fledged IoT platform, and I welcome you to actually try it. I don't have at the end a slide. I should have done that. But um, if you need to try the platform for IoT for any needs, um, see me or see any of our talent people that are around here, and they will give you free access uh, to try it. So I'm, as I said, I'm going to go down to right to the business. Um, you are all aware about connectivity. And you can see in this slide that we take this from all the way from the bottom when you have uh, barcodes and you go to communication that's actually satellite. When you look at Internet of Things, it can be done on any of those. And beside the printing, uh, everything that has an IP at this moment, in my view, is going to touch the Internet of Things on its own. So the connectivity is happening, and this is why we are here in Cyber Week. We all know about security and all we try to figure out how to protect, but it's because of the interconnection in between people, in between things, in between systems, in between platforms. And this is creating a lot of um, commotion when it comes down to security. And one of the things that I'm here to present is how you wrap it. So from a security point of view, especially for the Internet of Things. So, how many of you are actually knowledgeable about Internet of Things? Do you know what it is? Have you heard of it? Is there a brother of Internet of Things? Is one is called M2M. Have you heard of that? Okay, nobody. That's interesting. 
So around 2009, basically, the concept started in, in more like a service provider. They, they have things connected. You have basically a Coke machine that actually dispense something go using a solar connectivity. Uh, maybe they have a VPN inside. It starts piling up kind of a connection, bringing things to the, to, to, to the cloud to put them in the, in, the, um, in the visible way. Moving forward, you're gonna get around 2012, you get the enterprise awareness. So basically now, enterprise and say, hold on a second, if I have all these connections, if I can make all of them connect, can I actually draw more information from them so I can run my business better? So we call it this one the EAP. AEP, it's basically the uh, application enterprise. This is the time when things are starting to be the IoT way, uh, Internet of Things connected. Now, what we are seeing today in 2016 and moving forward is becoming a public awareness. Now it's getting personal. So you are looking to see, hold on a second, I have a smartwatch, I have a Fitbit, I have a phone, they are interconnected, uh, my phone connects to some sort of a cloud that is designed somewhere. Um, what do they do with that information? Suddenly privacy, security, is coming into picture and it's not your regular security anymore. There is something else that people are starting to be aware. Why do they make money out of my privacy? Can they sell that without me knowledge? Did you actually look to any SLAs that you are signing when you purchase a Fitbit and you connect it to your smartphone? How many of you read it? Oh, none. Exactly my point. So that's where it is right now. So what we see in, in IoT at this moment? We, he, we see sensor and things. They are at the bottom. They can supply your information. What we see now is Huge networks. Take a look. I gave you an example in the interconnect. Networks of networks. Now you have a, a, a network inside of the a cellular provider. You have a, a network inside of uh, Amazon. You have a network inside of Azure. You have everywhere. And now you start connecting them. You don't even know who connects them and why, really. Now you go to platforms. Platforms are giving you, inside of Azure, they have a platform for uh, data aggregation, they have a platform for distribution of connectivity, uh, and, um, you name it. L machine learning examples are multiple. There are platforms of platforms right now, more and more and more. This complexity in terms of IoT is getting even worse at this moment. So, that being said, is anyone aware of where we sit with security? You see, I don't have cyber in my, my presentation. I just try to stay away from that. I think someone is gonna thank me because he uses all the words possible right now for, for today. Are you aware of this? And we, I have examples. Automotive, shipping, transportation, uh, customer, basically um, sensors, power distribution, semiconductor, um, energy. Do you know how these things can be secure if they need to be connected? If all these things, do you know how really has needs to be done? This is where we want to be right now. So, does anybody have, know about the uh, money online? Okay. So it's an interesting thing, okay? So I will just give you a, a little bit of things. Rebuild systems very secure. But they did it before, and this is an example. The French put an unbelievable system to protect themselves. But you can always have a, one, a way around, and that is the week that is here. You are actually trying to stay away from that around the money online. Because you build it the best that you can, but at the end of the day, there is gonna be always something around. So, just a little bit of education. We are in an uh, academia right now. Um, the three pillars of security, if anybody is aware of, I'm just gonna quickly put them out there. And they are valid for any system that you wanna uh, uh, build. 
confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And basically, if you look to what is needed, this is what is needed. You need to make sure that you protect the information that has value. You want to make sure that if it has value, it is correct. And if it has value, and if the right people can access it at the right time. So this is basically the concept of security. And they can apply for anything. And this is what needs to be done also for the Internet of Things. Now, let's talk a little bit about the real data. I'm going you all around to kind of building up a little bit of a case. When you look at transferring information, it doesn't matter what it is, but the, in, in, in the Internet of Things, the real data is the temperature, okay? This is what you think needs to be protected, but there is more than that. It's actually, in some cases, this is not the most important part. You wanna have the configurations data protected. You wanna have operational data protected. So everything needs to be in such a way that there is nobody can has access so that we don't go around a corner. How much time do I have? Okay, I'm the first one, so I have to, you give me more time, right? <laughs> um, so what, what customers are seeing in INOT? They see multiple sensors, I explained, multiple networks, multiple platforms or portals, and also they see uh, multiple ways of getting them into their systems. Now, if I take this picture, um, you can draw a line in between any of this, uh, and you can say that the vertical lines are representing an inflection point in security because they are transferring information from one side to the other. I can build security in each of the silos, but at the end of the day, I can transfer the information in between them. Now, it goes back to I protect the real data, I protect my configuration data, I protect my operational data. Each of them, they have to do that. Now, the question is, who owns all this? Each of them will say, I own it. Each of them will say, you don't. Because once it's in my systems, or I produce it, I will be the one actually own it. At the end of the day, the real data that I explained it to you might be owned by the customer. But the configuration and the operation might actually be owned by the entities. Now it's becoming a problem because nobody is actually responsible for their security. As Martin said, who's responsible of this? Okay? So, a real view. This is a real view that Telet is implementing right now. And it has more. This is basically one of the phases. Just give you a perspective of IoT. Many things going on here, many domains. A public domain, a wireless domain, a platform domain, a customer domain, a transportation domain. Each of them, they have their particularities. If you read this slide and you take a picture and go back and look at it, there's nothing fancy here. But what it is, what you're gonna see is VPNs. I have VPN between that guy, that guy. I have, a, I have a connection from that guy to that guy. I have a TLS inside. I have a connection that it's actually something built in between that application and the other application, in between that portal and that platform, and that ERP and about uh, a connection between the uh, a module. Where is the customer here? Where is the person that actually needs the data? How much control does he have of this? This is the reality of what is needed right now. And my title, actually, I have to go back to the title of the presentation. It was end-to-end -end security at the end of the day. Do I have end-to-end? -end? Can I say in this real picture that the sensor that I have in the module on the left-hand side here generating a sensor data, can I transfer it secure without nobody knowing it, where it is, into my domain, which is the customer domain, basically into my ERP? And you see this picture here has some keys. Everybody's talking about PKI and keys. How do you get the keys in such a way inside of these elements? How you distribute billions of keys? Just think for a second. Internet of Things will reach 50 billion devices. Do all of them need to have a private key? Just think for a second. 
this is a, an amount of information that needs to be handled in a different way. So my case today, my case today is why? Why do we need an end-to-end -end security? Why we cannot make a very simple connection in such a way that the customer controls it and has the ability to know that if I encrypt the data into my sensor, I will get it on the other side without any problem. So, technically, it's not getting simpler. Commercially, everybody needs to have that. And at the end of the day, the operational is gonna go back to the CIA. By the way, it's not the CIA from the United States. It's confidentiality, integrity, and availability. I get that all the time. But you can get it right. You, you, you can code it the way you want it at this moment. I don't care. So you need it. No matter what, there are cases that are needed. And I'll give you at the end the reason. So how do we strengthen the links in between them? I'm just gonna wrap it up a little bit faster. The requirements for end-to-end -end security, especially for IoT, is regarding how you do provisioning, how you do key control, how you provide identity, how do you do data control, data trace, basically, where is the data, and one of the items that actually is very important to me is the sunsetting. What's happening with the device that has been there, nobody knows where it is, it has a cellular connect connection, spews data, has been hacked, how do I get it out of my back? What's happening with that? Can they get more going into that or not? So that being said, why we do this for? Why we are arguing for end-to-end -end security? Why we are actually making this harder? There is only one reason in my view, and the more you go up and up and up into the IoT solutions, there is only one word that you have to consider, compliance. There is a regulation somewhere. You're gonna have, um, I'm not familiar entirely with the local uh, regulations, but I think they are stricter than the United States, but I'll take the ones that I know for, for sure. You have HIPAA, you have PCI, all these are actually a compliance. If you go for a solution, they will look and say, do you have a compliance? What do you do for that? So you have to provide an end-to-end -end security for any solutions for IoT. Thank you very much.